boy's bathroom, Hinata's favorite place. Oh, it's not Hinata. It's Tarashi. Ah, yes. Japan, the land of child bullies. Damn. If anime were to be believed, bullying is intense. Oh, it's Suki. Oh, this is why. This is why. Okay, thanks for the help, <laughs> Suki. Always invested, heavily invested in what you're doing and your surroundings. I'm six foot. Yeah, but I'm six foot. You can be better. Oh, this is what he's saying to him. Right, right. What would you say to Suki? I love you. The two things that scare me most about Japan, alleyways and middle school bullies. Suki has a quiet power. I think part of it is a feeling of indifference or being above it. But I suspect that that's a little bit of a facade, maybe a self-preservation mechanism. I also get the feeling that Suki's really smart. I mean, come to think of it, that's been substantiated a little bit with his academics, right? He's one of the best students in the group. But it came to mind at first because of the way he is very critical. He teases people. But I don't really feel like it's mean necessarily. I don't think he's mean-spirited. I think a lot of it is kind of a test. Maybe it's that he's really sharp and therefore largely unchallenged. And so I think sometimes people like that, they put things out there, they throw out little jabs, because in some way they're hoping for a response, something interesting, something that forces them out of their homeostatic, reliable baseline, which in a way is a terrible place to be, because it requires very little from you. And it's easy to get stuck there because there's not a lot of people to challenge you or break you up. There's this protective little layer that you can live in if you're somewhat gifted. It's easy to never learn how to truly apply yourself. And the more time you spend in that state, the harder it is to apply yourself beyond your natural gifts because you're just so used to resting on them. But I think in most cases, conscientious effort will always surpass natural talent. The people who are truly unstoppable have both. Episode 8, Illusionary Hero. It's a weird position. Do you ask him to stay? I mean, do you ask for more? Do you respect his wishes? And that was Suki's out. <laughs> See ya. Something's... Uh-huh. Yeah. Something's brewing. He's trying to convince himself. He's trying to push down something that's coming up to the surface. It's his brother. What happened with his brother? What could it have been? So he's following in his brother's footsteps. I'm alarmed at how serious this situation could turn. I don't know the like the extent of it. At this point, Suki's just a fan of his brother, not volleyball. What a happy family. Another thing I'm terrified of in anime. Nothing ever goes right when there's that overly happy family. And that's when the Titans attacked. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> Damn, that accuracy though. They're in the same grade. I guess that's why they mistook him for a sixth grader. I was the lame one, remember? The lame kid? He says it so casually, but he's so proud. It's like, he can't even contain it. Nah, so he wants to join in on this. He love it. He's loving it. Yeah, yeah, look at that face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Give me that. Give me that sweet brotherly love. Just bracing myself for the tragedy. Anime has made me very paranoid. What the hell could have happened? I'm an older sibling myself, so I've never experienced it in this direction. But I've seen it. I've seen older brother syndrome, and I know it's a powerful force. I wonder if there's any pain involved. Like, actually, I'm pretty sure there is. To growing up and, and catching up to your older brother and, and realizing their faults for example. Because in some of the relationships I've seen with the older brother, younger brother situation, as a kid, yeah, your parents are larger than life, right? But your brother is a god. What's it like to see your, your god become a mere mortal? Uh, 
Maybe he's been lying? Maybe he's been lying about his status? He did pause when so he called him the ace. I like how he's bragging on Tsuki's behalf. Oh no, oh no. Oh, he's been lying. That's why he doesn't want Tsuki to come. Is he even on the team? Is he even on the bench? But he was so good at receiving. He had, he's received it right into the basketball hoop. Oh, he's rubbing it in his face. Yeah, but he looks up to Suki like Suki looks up to his brother. Yikes. Is he in the room? That's my question. Oh no, that's so awkward. Oh no. That's gonna be an awkward family dinner. That must have really hurt him that moment, the older brother. That wasn't a tragedy, but it was still, still hurt. It was a betrayal. But, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it is what I was trying to get at earlier. It's not so much the act itself that I that I think hurts. It's the fact that Suki idolized him. And he was, you know, he's perfect. He's a god. It kind of exposes him as not not a god. To anyone else or to me watching his older brother's actions, I'm like, it's sympathetic, you know? It's like, poor guy. He just wanted to be something. Wanted people to think he was something. He told a little lie about being an ace on the volleyball team. But for Suki, his older brother was so high, it's a long way to fall. But I can kind of see the fear, and it connects to the fact that he, he calls everything lame. Trying and failing, I guess, looks looks lame. If you don't give it your all, then you're not lame because you're just not giving it your all, right? So wherever you are is fine, because it doesn't matter, right? It's just a club. But of course, in a way, that ends up being lamer. What was lame about his brother wasn't the fact that he didn't become the ace or even make the starting team. It was the lie, the dishonesty. If I had to put it on a scale, I'd say that I would find it more admirable to watch someone try and not fulfill their goal than to not apply themselves at all, not to try anything for fear of not being successful. That makes sense. Anybody can do that. This is not his influence. Oh, damn. Getting called out. And that's tough to do for, for Suki. He has an air that makes you just not want to do that with him. Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> that was one of the roughest moments of the show for me. <laughs> this is such a huge deal that he's saying this so openly. <laughs> I was thinking earlier, they kind of switched roles a little bit. Suki started out as his savior or whatever, but... Yeah, I felt like secretly he wants to be shaken up. He needed someone to rise to his level, and I think that just happened. Daichi gets it. Daichi gets it. But what is he gonna ask? What does he have to say? I really like that line, what else do we have besides pride? I wouldn't go so far as to say that the victory doesn't matter, and that it's only about the effort you put in. This is a domain where victory is important. I care about it for the team. And I think just generally speaking, it's important to at least feel like you've come away with something. Even outside of sports, you know, just having goals in general. You want to have something measurable where you can track yourself and see where you're, you are, where you've come from, and get that feeling of accomplishment, which can be sort of a feedback to build confidence and let you know you're on the right track, etc. But I do think this is definitely a case of the perfect is the enemy of the good. Because if your goal, or if you're defining success, only on being the absolute best at a very specific thing that leaves at all possibility of any other victories that are building in that process. A high school championship would not feel bad. It would be a great thing for him. It'd be a great thing for everyone on the team. Not only would it be something they had forever, but they take the things they learned along with them for the rest of their lives and apply it to other things, which ultimately is the bigger game, more important game. One in which, in a sense, they can be number one. I mean, it sounds stupid, but the goal, I think, is something like to be the best you that you can be, given your unique disposition, skill set, personality, set of circumstances, etc. And since a lot of that 
is your personal growth and development, probably one of those essential ingredients is going to be the sense of self you can develop and the resilience that that will give you. To just not engage in anything for fear of not being perfect or not being the, the ultimate means you're not on that journey at all. To pretend it doesn't matter or that you don't care because everyone does care does seem to me to lack something like pride, that sense of fighting spirit for yourself, if that makes sense, being on your own team. She came at a very interesting time. She came at a time of like really intense personal drama for a lot of people. That's basically how it went, and that is the cause of all of this. There's like a Heracross beetle just on the wall. あれは3年で全国にも行ってるし。あ、でもサンデンで全国にも行ってるし。あ、でもサンデンで全国にも行ってるし。あ、でもサンデンで全国にも行ってるし。あ、でもサンデンで全国にも行ってるし。あ、で
get more out of it? Wouldn't you enjoy it? Wouldn't you learn more? You know, I think there actually is something cool about indifference. I think if you are so self-contained and so self-collected that you're just your own source of good energy and you're cool with whatever, that's pretty cool. That's a gift. But Sugi's not indifferent. What he has is like feigned indifference because he's actually scared of what might happen if he tried. He's scared of facing defeat that he feels is inevitable. And I think you can only fake that for so long before people catch on. You know, if you just downplay the importance of everything, can't see the beauty in things, are an eternal critic, there's value in that sometimes, but it's way more impressive to me to find the maximal beauty in something or find the maximal importance of something or interest in something. It requires more work, more engagement, but you also get a lot more out of it and it's more productive. It's more giving, more generous, more charitable. You do care, you know, you're just afraid to admit it. I mean, Suki, his ambitions are huge. He wants to be number one of the world, you know? He wants to be the best ever. And he's right that that's probably not attainable, but I like the way that the other guy with the scary cat eyes broke it down. He didn't say it this way, but the way I took it is that there are a lot of different ways to look at victory. And the way he explained loving the way he can destroy defenders. It's like, yeah, that's something that you gained. You know, you went up a rung in your life somehow in some some tangible way. And that journey is exciting. It's full of life. It's engagement with the world. Now what I'm most looking forward to is the moment, the moment for Suki where it clicks for him, when he actually applies himself and it works and he actually gets focused.